Elder Cook and Elder Christofferson has a talk on our official church website. It's titled, Let Us Be at the Forefront, and it's under the section of same-sex attraction within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's talking about kindness, inclusion, and respect for all of God's children. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually share that talk with you tonight. First, we're going to hear from Elder Christofferson. The thing that's always important is to recognize the feelings of a person, that they are real, that they are authentic, that we don't deny that someone feels a certain way. We, we take the reality where it is and we go from there. And we want people to feel that they have a home here, that we have much, much more in common than anything that's different about us. Some of the, the experiences that are related there talk about that uh, in this website. And I believe it is crucial that we always continue to feel that, to express that, to acknowledge the reality of people's feelings and, and circumstances and go from there. The thing that's always important is to... Okay, so what did you get out of Elder Christofferson's talk? And a lot of, so originally what happened when the church launched a website back in 2014, it was titled mormonandgay.lds.org. And they, a lot of members thought it was our, not our official church website. So what they did was our family history department within the church worked really hard with the Area 70s and the, um, the Quorum of the Twelve to merge that site with uh, churchofjesuschrist.org. And it's also in our LDS tools under Life Help. You scroll to the bottom, you can find all those videos. So that website was an actual official church website and they now merged it with Come Unto Christ. You can also find it when you log in to the back of the, when you log in to make your donations or to pay your tithing or schedule a temple appointment, it's on the right hand side. And now we're gonna watch a talk with Elder Cook. Nobody should be more loving and compassionate. No family who has anybody who has the same gender issue should uh, exclude them from the family circle. They need to be part of the family circle. But let us be at the forefront in terms of expressing love, and compassion, and, re and outreach uh, to, to those. And let's, let's not have families uh, uh, exclude or, or be disrespectful of, of those who choose a different lifestyle as a result of their feelings about their own, their own gender. I'm sorry uh, that I'm... Uh, I feel very strongly about this, as you can, as you can tell. But uh, I, think it's, I think it's a very important principle. Nobody should be more loving and compassionate. Nope. So Elder Cook talked about, let us be at the forefront. Nobody should be more loving and compassionate, when, especially when a family or friend is dealing with same-sex attraction. So they're talking about, multiple issues. They're talking about kindness, inclusion, respect for all of God's children. And that's the message I felt prompted to share with you tonight. And I can't explain why. I was just talking to my friend John and Colleen Lowe in California, and I said, I have to go live. I have to share a message in, in a few minutes, so I need to prepare something. And I just had this strong prompting, especially after going live with my hairdresser today and sharing that important message with all of you is it's um, I, I know I have a lot of followers on here that probably aren't aware that yes, I am a gay convert to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I follow the same commandments as more than 50% of our fellow brothers and sisters who are single. I stand behind elder Holland and the Quorum of the Twelve, 100%. And for those of you who are new to my page, a lot of people were in an upheaval back in August when he spoke at BYU, and I came to his defense. And I said, I support Elder Holland. I saw nothing but love in that talk. Nothing but love. I could feel his compassion 
that he had for all of us and all the members. And I know that by supporting the Quorum of the Twelve and the First Presidency, that we, if we don't know the answers right now, they will be revealed. And we are taught to ask God for answers, not outsiders. A video that I posted last night received a lot of contention from non-believers. And I know without a fact that when you're attracting non-believers or haters, it's because you are in the right church, the church with his name on it, the church that allows us to perform proxy baptisms and confirmations for, oh, what did I just do? I turned on my, my computer and behind me by accident, whoopsie. The church that allows us to perform proxy baptisms and confirmations for our loved ones on the other side of the veil. No other church in the world does that. No other. And I can testify being able to perform my younger brother's ordinance who died in 2004 from a drug overdose, who became my revelation to joining this church, joining our church, joining his church, that I have made God a promise that I will use my social media to edify him. I say that as my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So I was feeling really nervous before going live tonight. And I could tell just before I said that opening prayer, I always say an opening prayer before I go live. And I say when, when, I, when I end the, 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 the video, the live, and I felt really strongly that Somebody out there needed to hear this message. And so I pray that it resonates with you. And I just, I know following the promptings and living the commandments worthy. Getting choked up. But because I was nervous, I knew this message needed to be shared. And the same when I was getting ready to defend Elder Holland in, in August, I was so upset and hurt that people were bashing one of our Quorum of the Twelve. I couldn't take it. I needed to come out and publicly defend him. Because how is Jesus going to plead their case to God when they meet our maker. If we don't defend them, we have to all be defenders of Christ. We have to be protectors of Christ. And I couldn't sit back and I was like sitting there. I was actually in the living room and I was like this. I was so nervous to hit that record, go live button. And once I went live, this feeling, this protection, this armor washed over me, and I had this calmness. The Holy Spirit took over. It wasn't me speaking. And that video was my most shared video. It had over a thousand shares, I don't know, 500, 700 comments, and 30 or 40,000 views. I have never had that many views on a, on a video other than reels. Reels get a lot more views because they're a lot shorter. So I am so grateful for all of you that hit the little airplane button and share this on your stories because that's how people find out about this. That's how people's heart opened. That's how people can feel the spirit if they're losing a testimony. And I'm so grateful for everybody that hits that little, in the right hand corner, that little button and saves it. I see all that insight. I don't see who saves it or who shares it unless you tag me in it. But um, I am just so blessed for all of you. And I'm just gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna get to your comments. 
I think the first comment I saw was from our friend Sandy. Um, oh, Books and Birds is on. I love you guys. It was from Sandy. She says, I love your hair. Holler. Yes, I did get some new, I did get a new haircut and I got chemically enhanced today. And I like it because it's low maintenance and it's easy to take care of. 